I want to add on to the number guessing game that I've been working with in the last few tutorials. And it's set up pretty good right now, where when you press on the button, it calls the main function, the function that is titled main, and it will actually um, check against the computer number that it's generated. So in my program here on line 26, I have a uh, computer number variable that holds a random number uh, between uh, 1 and 50. And actually, I for some reason, I seem to be wanting to use math.seal, and I need to be changing that. So math.floor. Okay, so it'll generate a number between 1 and 50. And I went through last time what these variables were, and I talked about the player button dot disabled and how dis uh, disabled is a uh, JavaScript property that can be used to uh, make the button so it works or not, so, so it'll accept events or not. Um, and then I talked about the conditionals here between lines 40 and 55. So since then, I've added a little bit of code in here. Note that this code goes between um, the opening and closing brackets for the main function. So it's all part of that main function. In fact, go ahead and bring that up. There we go. That's a little bit easier for me to see, but whatever is easier for you, you can use for the uh, opening curly bracket if you want that uh, down below on the next line or not. Okay, so created these variables here and they're holding, um, uh, total guess is holding the number of guesses that the user have done each time they call this function, notice that it increments by one. So then we can check on that in a little bit later. Actually down here. So after I've done these um, conditionals to check and see if it's less than, if the player's number is less than or greater than the computer number, or if in fact it's equal, I'm gonna check and see if the user has exceeded uh, six guesses. Actually, in this case, it's going to be if it is equal to six or greater than. Because if they didn't get it right and they've guessed six, then they have now, um, then they've exceeded their, their guesses. So we'll come down here and check to see inside that. Um, actually, pardon me. We have checked here to see if they've exceeded six. And if they have, then we want to disable the button. For all intents and purposes, what that will do is end the game. It'll mean that they that the user won't be able to press the button to trigger the main function anymore. So player button dot disabled equals false. Just remember that player button is the ID that is associated with with uh, within the the uh, button HTML tag, and you can verify that by looking up there in the code. On line 59, we have the output inner HTML. So we're writing to the output, and it says you have guessed. You have used your six, six guesses, and the number is. So right here, this is all within quotes, so it's going to literally have an H3. It's going to be um, kind of large text there that will say you've guessed uh, six times or you've exceeded get, uh, six guesses. And then here, we'll um, add on the computer number. Remember, that's a variable, all right? So it just shows whatever, wh whatever the computer number was. That way, they aren't left wondering how, how close were they, right? And so we'll show them that, you know, maybe they were almost there. They almost guessed the number, but not quite. And sorry, what I want to do right here, I have a mistake there. Duh. I had actually explained that wrong. So on there, um, the false would actually mean that the disabled was not true. And so it would mean that you could still click on it. So on line 59, what I want to do is actually make sure that the disabled equals true. So that now makes it so it is no longer workable. The button is disabled. All right. So um, so there, there we go. And each time that I run the game up at the top, when someone refreshes the browser, we'll just make sure that disabled is false so it works. So you see how we can restart the game by the people hitting um, refresh on the browser. So one of the tricks you could have is having a function. So that way you could just have a restart. You could restart the game so the user doesn't have to refresh the browser. You just have a button called restart. And when they restart it, then it would reset all the variables and it would um, set the disabled to false for that particular button. So there's a couple of things you can do to really enhance the game and make it more interesting and playable.